Hey everybody, <clears throat> welcome to another video review. This is a piece that I've had on my uh, kitchen countertop for a long, long time. Probably the better part of, I would say six months, maybe even longer. Uh, I got this in quite a long time ago and I've just never done a video review because uh, this is gonna be like, I think another long one. There's a long story to go with it. I have so much to say about it because it made such an um, kind of, you know, amazing or important impression on me. Um, and, you know, it definitely doesn't disappoint. There's some pros, some cons, some positives and negatives. Uh, it's so big, again, I have to sit way back. I do have to shoot everything in sort of wide screen mode. Um, which makes it, you know, sort of awkward because if I you know, pan really, really far back, then you kind of get to see, um, you know, my my kitchen, which is not the most uh, professional <laughs> background. But if I don't do that, then you don't really get an idea of, um, you know, a sense of the entire statue um, sort of, you know, you know, its glory, so to speak. Uh, I guess one thing I can do is I can shoot with me next to it but then i feel like it doesn't it's like it goes the opposite way right like then at that point um i feel like the statue is too far away and then like the speaker which is myself begins to sort of take away from the piece because i'm way bigger than the statue so i, I don't really like the type of unboxing videos or or youtube videos where Again, um, the actual piece that's supposed to be the center of attention is instead on a table next to the guy talking about the piece or the girl talking about the piece. It just seems kind of awkward. And I know that you can, of course, um, address that by just intercutting with stills or closer details later, but that just seems to be, for me at least, a little bit too much work. So I try to just um, do the best I can by showing the piece um, from far away we have a few shots of that um, so people have an idea of what it looks like and then later on I just go in for a lot more close-ups and so at least for my video reviews um, I tend to show a lot more close-up details than others and a lot less panoramic ones if that makes any sense and so that's what you kind of get um, you know from my series so this is um, the Beast portrait version. It is a custom, so it's not actually licensed. It's from a Facebook group, um, which I'm going to keep essentially confidential out of respect for the producer and the Facebook group. Uh, different groups are kind of kind of picky about that um, in terms of the customs. Like some are okay as long as you don't use their real names, while others prefer to remain completely anonymous. And I frankly, don't really remember all of the different rules and so I just keep it simple by doing the same thing for all of them. But um, you know, if you're interested, obviously you can very easily find this group. Um, they're relatively new, um, but they've done some pretty cool pieces, uh, pieces that I think have, you know, kind of announced uh, their arrival on the scene. And the reason this is special to me is because um, I saw you know, a concept art uh, of this statue. And I saw it on one of the more large, like one of the larger um, statue groups, like I think, you know, statue, what is it? Um, statue Collector or statue.com, statue VIP. I, I forget, there are all these versions um, on Facebook. But it was, it's one of the bigger groups, I think Statue Collector or whatever. And it was such a amazing and striking artistic design um, that I was immediately captivated by it and I just had to find out, you know, like who made it, what group created it. And that's really, really rare for me because you know, after collecting for so many years, you know, well over a decade um, and having bought and then sold quite a few things over the years, um, I'm a little bit jaded, right? A little bit cynical. Um, it takes a lot to impress me. It takes a lot to move me because I kind of know what it's like to fall into that trap, you know, uh, computer renders, um, you know, statues sculpted, again, uh, digitally always look amazing. 
and then sometimes not quite um, doesn't quite live up to that when you actually print it and then build it and then paint it and then even worse um, when that pr uh, prototype piece that has to be replicated mass market um, or en masse at the factory in production you know when this game first started these custom pieces they would sell out very quickly. It would be truly like the old days of the garage kits where you would only have 20, 25, 30 pieces. But now, of course, you know, these these companies that are trying to make money, uh, sometimes, you know, you're making 70, 80 of them. There's like five different versions. It's getting kind of crazy. And when those numbers go up, then um, obviously, you know, you have, you have a problem because uh, you have to maintain quality uh, with those increased numbers. Uh, so uh, I've fallen into that trap before. I still fall into that trap occasionally when a piece is like, you know, truly, truly amazing. But uh, it happens to me a little bit less often. So it takes a lot for me to get really, really excited, you know, about um, about a piece. And uh, this definitely fit. Uh, I don't have really any beast statues. Um, I just find it you know, very difficult. Um, in the statue world, at least in 2020, Three, it's a it's sort of like a copycat, copycat world, and so you'll find that what happens is you know if you have like a Grail character, like a, a character that's involved in a Grail piece, then all of the other little companies try to capitalize on that and they start you know paying their sculptors. They they start coming up with crazy concepts to sort of jump on the bandwagon, right? And so the example would be say for instance you have like the Wolverine versus Wendigo Phase Two. Um, and that's like, you know, this holy grail of statues and all of a sudden tons of Wolverine pieces come out that are trying to copy that concept. Um, you have Wolverines versus ninjas, you have um, the Silver Surfer coming out of a black hole and there's just like tons of copycat. And so the same thing with the Beast, you know, there's a lot of copycat pieces with the Beast. It's hard to do the Beast right, right? Because he is a beast, which means he has a lot of fur. It's hard to sculpt, you know, fur in a believable fashion. Um, and make it look good uh, so you know it's tough um, and of course there's a lot of different versions of Beast out there both in the comic books and in the movies a lot of source material that you can play off of and so there's a wealth of things you can do with the Beast so there's just so many different statues and ideas and concepts of him out there both as like almost like this you know incredible incredibly physical you know specimen and then obviously also his more cerebral side. And the Beast is at the same time one of the smartest characters in the entire Marvel um, canon and also, you know, extremely powerful. So it's a very interesting juxtaposition and there's a lot of different ways you can bring that out in statue form. And the thing that kind of um, made this thing so remarkable to me is that it really, of, of all of the pieces, uh, gives me this impression that this could be almost a museum piece. Um, it has, or at least it has uh, the ambition to be a museum piece. It has that type of sensibility. It's kind of reaching for that, right? It's not just, um, you know, character demolishing a set. No. Again, copycat, copycat. Um, it's not that. Um, you know, they're, they're going more highbrow, so to speak. And you can tell immediately that they're doing that, you know, because of the sort of the fall marble base, right? This is like a huge base and just utterly devastating in its weight. Really, really solid. Uh, it's obviously not real marble, but um, you know, I think they they did a really, really fine job trying to recreate you know the the feeling of marble. Um, my JND Wonder Woman 1984, um, you know, third scale statue of Gal Gadot as Wonder Woman. You know, that is actually I think marble. Um, very, very beautiful and classy. Uh, of course, they couldn't do that for such a large base, but they attempted to, and you can kind of see how they tried to do that. You can see the little tiny texturing, um, the, little, the little wrinkles they kind of carved in, the little pitting to give you the idea of old marble. Uh, they painted it pretty nicely. There's also a little, again, all this little tiny pitting, the veins in the marble and the rock. So that was really really nice work. You can see it all the way here, all the way around. And, um, you know, it kind of gives you almost like a Greek statue or Greek art sensibility. And then, of course, in each of the four uh, sides, 
you have engraved in gold um, homages to science. Like this is a DNA helix. And over here, this is a chemical a formula with the bonds. I don't know what that is particularly. And then over here, you know, like a mathematical equation of some type, I think. And then the final one over here. So all of these are homages to science, different types of science. I don't know whether this is a circuit board or something to do with physics, but um, I think that was very classy, you know, very, very nice. Um, again, a homage to the beast's, you know, uh, intelligence. And then uh, you have this amazing portrait of the beast from here with him wearing his glasses. He's contemplated and you can see the amazing uh, detail of the uh, the fur all sculpted and it's just him in profile and the glass is just this perfect touch and he's just a thinking. It reminds me of uh, Rodin's The Thinker. Very contemplative. And then out of this huge portrait, and I'm gonna put my hand here, you can kind of get an idea for how big this is. Out of this huge portrait, you have, you know, the X-Men, uh, the X-Man beast. This is the modern version, uh, you know, with this fists raised, just jumping all the way out. And um, it's really, really cool because again, I, I've said before in some, of my in some of my reviews that I really enjoy or love statues in motion. Um, because it's so hard to pull off. Um, and so I love the pose of this beast because it really conveys the energy and the power of him leaping out at you. And it's that moment frozen in time. And I just really, really um, love that pose because it conveys, again, the energy so well and they suspend him so cleverly against the, um, you know, the sort of the half size or the full size portrait that, um, you know, it does really, it's just really very convincing that he's leaping out in mid flight. So that pose is absolutely tremendous. And then when you sort of look at the piece in its entirety, the, the fall marble base, the, you know, the head of the beast, and then the actual warrior beast jumping out of the head, it's just such a, a unique and striking um, image that makes it so above and beyond every other um, art designer, every other beast out there that and I just felt like I really, really wanted to have this in my collection because it just really spoke to me. And that's the wonderful world of collecting. And that's kind of like art because um, it's just so amazing. I, I, honestly, like at the time, I felt like this was literally one of the best concepts I ever seen and it got me just so excited when I saw it but it's hilarious because later on as I'm reading some of the Facebook forums um, I learned that not everybody agrees with me like you know a lot of people I guess don't like it they don't get it they think that it's kind of goofy uh, they don't like the fact that you know he's jumping out of this guy's head and there is another version of this which I a long story short wound up buying which I'm probably just gonna sell there's another version of the of this where it's like the exact same beast, exact same sculpt, but he's actually leaping out of the sentinel's hand. There's a there's a sentinel hand, and I just find that, in my opinion, kind of boring. It's like, come on, you know, it's like we've had how many X Men versus Sentinels do we have? You're just copying off of again last levels, um, original, you know, genius, right? These pale imitations. Uh, of last level's true versus Sentinel series. Um, but there's nothing unique about that. And I think it loses a lot of its um, power by just putting him like over a Sentinel uh, hand. Now, I haven't opened that box yet. I haven't reviewed it. So maybe I'll feel differently. I know one gentleman, um, you know, who actually sold this piece uh, to buy the one with him over the Sentinel. And his reasoning was that it just fit better with his collection, fit better with his Sentinel. He has a lot of X-Men versus Sentinel pieces. He just wanted that more, and it was a little bit more um, space efficient, which is you know, legitimate. But um, I just can't believe that you know, there's people who, who don't like it. There's another person I exchanged some information and just kind of chatted. And again, he specifically did not like this. But you know that's what art. That's what makes art amazing, right? It's like everybody um, has their own personal 
views on that and there's no right or wrong. But for me, this is one of the most amazing uh, concepts. And when you kind of look at this, it just balances so perfectly the essence of the beast, you know, his intelligence, his agility, his strength, um, sort of the primeval, you know, force of him, the reason he's called the beast, and at the same time, you know, the genius inside. So for me, really, really love it. Um, and then obviously the detail of um, the hair, right? Because when you're talking about the beast, it's all about the hair. So kind of, we already talked about the base, but kind of looking at the way they sculpted all of these um, different wisps of hair and, you know, kind of the, the claws of the, the feet. Just wonderful uh, detailing here. Let's see if I can show you all of that without screwing it up. But yeah, you can kind of see the nails, the fur again. I mean, they did a, a really, really awesome job sculpting fur on this guy. Um, there's another one by Last Level that I have that I'll review. I haven't opened yet, but they take quite a different um, attitude or quite a different approach to the fur with, I think, mixed results. But here you can actually really um, see, you know, the different ways of sculpting the, the different you know, flowing hair of the head and then all the hair from the arms, um, all of that. And then here's his face. So this, this is like a great sculpt. You know, if you really want to appreciate it, Take a look. This is one of the best uh, sculpts, pure sculpts I've seen in a long, long time. Both action poles, having to deal with the fur, and then having two uh, such different mediums, right? So we can again take a look here at um, the glasses, so perfect. And then, of course, you know, his face. So great job here. And then, of course, the actual statue here. Another thing I think they did an amazing job on is um, the texturing of the the suit. So you can see all of the, all of, I mean, this can only be done, of course, digitally, but just look at all the detail um, of the actual suit itself, all of that beautiful patterns and the beautiful texture of that suit. And of course the red X, you can see the realistic wrinkles. And then they do another fantastic job when it comes to the anatomy, right? I mean, this is gorgeous anatomy, not just anatomy, static anatomy, but anatomy in motion, anatomy in the middle of a powerful jump. You can see all of the muscles bunched up, you know, very, very realistic and accurate. I mean, he's super muscular, but not sort of like that over the top Rob Liefeld, sort of, you know, like bodybuilder ridiculous muscle, but just, Nice, powerful anatomy. You can see all of the tendons and the striations, all the big muscles of the, the legs, the hamstrings, you know, the quads. And then up top, again, all the muscles of the, of the lateral lats, the rectus, all of this stuff, the pecs, but not ridiculous, but just very, very well-defined anatomy underneath the costume. So you're having to appreciate it through layers. And um, I really, really love, again, the anatomy. Uh, and for me, you know, that's, I'm kind of a big anatomy person. I, I really, I know the sort of anatomy I appreciate, and I know the anatomy that kind of turns me off and I don't like. And this is definitely anatomy that I'm very impressed by. So I gotta say, like, I really, really love the sculpt. Okay, so art direction, unique, powerful, very, very, um, you know, uh, highbrow, like I said before. This really could feel like it might come and be placed in a museum. And then incredible fidelity when it comes to, you know, sculpting the flowing um, fur, the hair, uh, the musculature, the details of the suit, um, the wrinkles of the suit. It's like this kind of skin tight. Um, I don't even want to call it leather. This, this is probably knowing the beast and the X-Men. This is probably some sort of, you know, special suit that's going to give them protection from the elements. Um, so all of that, the gold highlighting uh, the gold accents so everything about it and of course the powerful pose that then forces the muscles to contort and you have to you know you have to sculpt that and take that into account um, i have this head on right now because um, this is my preferred uh, head but take a look here very very nice sculpt you can see the detail of the teeth all individually uh, placed you know, the tongue. So this is, you know, very, very classy. 
I'm gonna put that aside and then we're going to use the other head. This is sort of, I guess, a more classic beast right here. This is the old school version. Again, look at all of the, the hair. Uh, every bee statue have to sculpt so much hair and it's hard to get hair to look natural, you know, when it's um, actually sculpted. So let's put this in here so you can actually see what he looks like now. So I'm gonna back up. So this is what uh, the impression is with the alternative head. I mean, it's all good, you know, it's a nice, nice different look. But uh, personally, you know, this is more, I don't know. I, th I think just for me, at least, it just looks a little bit goofier. I don't love this portrait as much. And so I would display it um, with this guy uh, definitely more. This is the more human version. For some reason, it kind of reminds me of the more, um, I don't know, is it like Jim Lee? I think like a Jim Lee version. Uh, whereas this is maybe a little bit more old school, classic comics version of the beast. Or maybe I don't know what I'm talking about. Maybe there'll be someone in the comments who will correct me. But there is at least a really big difference between the heads and the portraits to justify making them. Um, and so I appreciate that. And they, I also appreciate the fact that they didn't go uh, completely, you know, uh, over the top and make like, you know, four heads or three heads. Just give us two and that's good enough. So I'm going to take this off. And I'm gonna put my favorite head back on. Another thing I really like about this piece is that the engineering is really, really solid. There was no um, you know, issues putting everything together. Things are well magnetized, they fit together. It feels incredibly solid. A very, very heavy piece, but you feel comfortable you know, that it's all gonna stay. It's, well, it's just incredibly well engineered. So um, you know, those are all of the highlights you can see here. It, that the bust actually goes all the way down to the torso. You can see again, sort of the micro uh, texturing. Uh, you can see the individual stitches um, and, the st and the texturing of the leather. So just all very, very uh, impressive. And then when you look at the back, uh, it's obviously meant to be displayed a certain way, but here you can see X-Men, the Beast, and Hank McCoy signature. Um, this is the one, you know, one part of the, the statue I find a little bit of a weakness it's a little bit hokey don't really understand that i mean i guess this is kind of their way of announcing what it is it's kind of like their version of the plaque uh, telling you you know the property the series the character and his little signature um, this is probably an accurate signature that they got from the source material um, but yeah this is definitely not how you want to display it um, it is a homage to one i'm sure to one of the comic covers but um, I'm gonna move that back uh, so you can kind of see this is half the face. It's meant to be displayed this way. Um, this is a very unique, beautiful base, if you really wanna think of it. If you wanna think about it as a base uh, from which this is, from which the statue is exploding and jumping out from, you know, as if it's from his head. Again, exploring the duality of the character. It's really, really nice to see that. But now you know what it looks like on the other end. Um, and the final thing is the that I like to talk about is the paint job. Uh, that's the one thing you know that's maybe a little bit of a letdown. Uh, it's very interesting, but in almost all cases, the um, the statue looks better in person than in photos or in um, video. But I have to say that for whatever reason, um, this statue looks a lot better. Uh, on video than actually in person. I think it's because for whatever reason, the way I'm shooting with my phone, uh, it just sort of um, accentuates maybe the light from above. And I think if you displayed it correctly, um, it would look amazing. But um, where I have it set up, um, I do feel like the paint at the factory level tends to be just a little bit flat. Um, I like my paints to be a bit more vibrant. I like the paints to pop a little bit more, to be having a little bit more texturing. And again, maybe it's just simply not reasonable to uh, expect that you know, from a factory. I wouldn't say this was a bad paint job. I would say, again, that this is simply a mediocre paint job. Um, and mediocre in this case is not meant to be pejorative, uh, pejorative or insulting. It just means 
it's no better than average. I can I cannot say that it's any more than average, um, which then is a little bit of uh, it's a little bit sad then because uh, my, again I've made it very clear that in my opinion this is an exceptional uh, art design, exceptional uh, style, uh, and exceptional sculpt. And so for an exceptional sculpt with so much detail printed out and all of this flowing hair to be painted, frankly, um, with a very average paint, uh, it's a little bit of a, a, dis a disappointment, okay? A little bit of a disappointment. Um, the gold is just, in my opinion, not very convincing. Um, you know, this is obviously just just um, just sort of, you know, painted on painted resin, whereas you can, you can compare with the first Four Figures Ivy statue where they actually had some fake gemstones, which adds a little touch of class. And all of the colors just seem to be very um, blocky and flat. Like, you know, it's just one color, no shading. It's just there. Same thing with the hair. Um, it's literally all just one color. There is zero shading in any of the, the hair and the fur. Um, you know, uh, all of this here and here and here, this is all basically the same color. Um, now on video, uh, it doesn't look like it's the same color because as I'm moving it around, you can see the shadows sort of, you know, change. We see the light hitting it in different ways. As this is being moved around under the light, this is a lot brighter than it looks. So this is, again, kind of the illusion of what it looks like uh, under video, under photos. But again, uh, I feel like in real life, um, my main criticism is that all of the paints uh, are just too simple. Um, and I know that it makes it super simple for the factory to pump out a large number of them, um, but I definitely feel the difference, you know, when it comes to the paint. So in my opinion, uh, the paint is a bit of a letdown as far as this amazing piece goes. One of my favorite statue concepts of all time in reality. In terms of its limitation, it is pretty limited. One of the problems, in my opinion, with this group is they have just way too many variations. And a lot of uh, groups, I think, fall into this trap, which is that they want to please all of their, you know, fans, all of their members, and they just do too much, like, you know, too many heads, too many variations. So um, this group is sort of like, again, the king of variations, right? Um, you know, so now you have a version of this, then you have a version of this in bronze, and then you have a version of this in a sentinel hand, and the sentinel hand comes in two different colors. So all of a sudden, before you even know it, there's like literally four versions of this. And even if each version is only about, you know, say 20 units, all of a sudden you have a series of 100 of these pieces. Right? And that does, I think, in my opinion, hurt the value. Um, I think, though, as far as the portrait goes, it is pretty rare. Uh, unfortunately, I bought him so long ago, I don't know the exact number, but I want to say there's like maybe, at the time I could have sworn there was only about 20 of these. Um, I think there's 10 of the fall bronze version, um, but I think of this color type, there was only about 20. Um, I'll put it in the description if I find the actual number, but um, that is very, very rare. I think there's way more that they made of the beast and the sentinel hands, and of course they double that. Um, but this is definitely the more rare piece, and I think it tends to go for a little bit more on the secondary market. I think 2000 is a pretty solid and fair price for this um, out there. And again, you know, there's only so many, uh, and it's locked in a lot of people's permanent collections, because a lot of people do love it. So um, it is, in my opinion, the more highly sought after piece. So, um, there you have it. I think I've said everything I wanted to say about this beast statue. Um, I only have two beast statues. Um, well, I guess I have the Sentinel one, that's three. But I have the last level one with him, you know, wielding a big steel girder over a Sentinel hand uh, or over a Sentinel chest piece. And then um, I have this one and I have this one over the Sentinel. So I need to sell a few of those pieces. But um, I've been waiting to do this review for a long time just so I can collect my thoughts. A lot of times I have to own a piece for a while. I don't typically, unless it's a really like, spectacular piece, I don't typically uh, jump into a review. I kind of want to own it for a few months, look at it, think about it off and on. And then um, with the passage of time, I have like a more sort of, you know, collected approach, um, you know, 
a little bit more idea of what I want to say. So it's taken me close to, I think, half a year, if not longer, to get everything together to put together my thoughts and my review uh, on this uh, piece. But no, finally did it. I hope uh, you enjoyed it. There's not a whole lot of these, I think, on YouTube. Um, but these are my thoughts about, you know, the pros and uh, the cons of this. Uh, oh, before I sign off, there's one final thing that's a little bit awkward. It's kind of um, displaying it is a little bit weird now because if you want to display a full profile, then the beast comes out at sort of an odd angle. But if you want to display it with a beast like this, then it, it kind of, you know, the, the portrait is a little bit on an outward angle. But I think you are supposed to display it like not even head on like that, but like at an angle. And you do sort of want to see the beast spraying up. And from here, you get to see the back part of the portrait sort of an angle. So I think this is the optimal angle to display him, which, you know, is a little bit weird because you would think that you would want to display it like that head on. Uh, but that's not the case, obviously. You need to square up to actually see the statue coming out. And hopefully you just adjust it a little bit so you get to see the portrait in the background as well. So yeah, you know, kind of fiddling with the angle that you would best want to see this is also a little bit tricky. But for all of its little minor nitpicks with the paint and, um, you know, the, the particular pose and all that, this is still, uh, in my opinion, one of the one of the best statues of 2022, at least. I really, really like it. And there's a lot of boxes of checks for me in terms of the sculpt, the design, the rarity, you know, the uniqueness of the concept, how classy it is, all of those things together. So once again, I hope you enjoyed uh, this review of the beast um, leaping out of, you know, the mind of the portrait, so to speak. I don't really even know the name of this, um, you know, the name of the piece. I think, uh, you know, there's so many generic ones like beast versus sentinel, blah, blah, blah. But I would say that this is, this is probably Beast Portrait, I think is what it's known. Uh, if you want to search for it, Beast Portrait. Uh, so there you have it. And we have Ivy in the background. Um, you know, I, th I talked about her in another review just before this, where again, I talk about the, the flat paint. And honestly, you know, that is kind of the, the thing that lets down a lot of these uh, pieces uh, is that the, the concepts and the art design are getting more um, ambitious, you know, um, people are no longer afraid of creating or gambling on concepts that seem initially to be ridiculous or stupid or crazy, uh, that to implement them would just cost so much money that it's just, you know, a lot of times in the past, that you would just never even think of trying to turn those crazy concepts into reality. Um, but now, you know, I think last level with their pioneering work in that regard, for better and for worse, have sort of broken that ceiling, you know, they've taken that barrier down. So now people don't really feel like there are limits, like the limits have greatly expanded because of last level, in my opinion. And so, you know, there's no, uh, there's no barrier, like, you know, there's no limit, people just going for it. And of course, um, the ability to digitally sculpt and to digitally put in details and textures has never been greater than it is now. And so all of this stuff is there, the, the quality of the castings by companies like Ownage, more factors than ever competing with each other to put out product because, you know, this is a really big niche now. Um, but the one thing that kind of still separates um, the varying levels of this game is the production paint, not the prototype paint, but the production paint. And here you still see so many amazing pieces um, sort of failed you know, like they, they're, they've been, uh, they have a failing and, you know, they've been let down um, by the paint, you know, the factory paint. And I think that's kind of the next, um, the next frontier is to somehow try to get better quality with the paint. I mean, may, never maybe, um, there'll never be a, the approach, of course, a paint master, a custom paint job, but I should get better than this. It should be better where... Unfortunately, for a piece like Ivy and a piece like, you know, the Beast Portrait, you can actually see the shortcuts. You can see the conveyor belt. You can see the schemes, right, of the paint and how it lets down the piece. So that's the only part that I think is kind of disappointing. And it kind of is highlighted for me because I just reviewed back to back 
long reviews, detailed reviews um, of uh, two pieces that I think are actually really, really good, like, you know, really, really amazing, unique. Uh, like I said, how many ivy, you know, statues of that size and detail are there? There's none. Um, and of course, this is one of my favorite statues ever of the beast, but then let down again by that flat, you know, basic mediocre paint job. Um, so because I reviewed two statues, both with that issue, um, this really is kind of on my mind you know, as I close this review. So I'm hoping that, you know, that will somehow, um, that that's the next area we have to improve um, at the production level at least. Okay, so much for all of that. Um, hope you enjoy it again. And now I can finally sign off. Until next time, do take care.